All right, let's talk about inverse functions. Inverse, when I say inverses, I mean inverse functions. So two functions, let's say f of x and g of x, are inverses if a couple things are true. And there's a couple of characteristics of inverses. So let's, let's just pick a couple and see if they're inverses. So let's pick um, 2x squared plus 1. And let's pick um, the square root of x, 1 half the square root of x minus 1. Just because it looks like they're sort of inversey looking, right? Well, in order for them to be inverses, a couple things would have to be true. First of all, when I plug f of x, I should have changed the colors on this one. Let me do that. So first of all, when I, when I find f of g of x, f of g of x, that's functional compositions, functional composition, I should get just x if in order for them to be inverses. And also, when I do g of f of x, meaning when I plug f of x into g of x, I should also get x if they're inverses. Inverse if and only if. IFF means if and only if. That's true. So f and g, f and g are inverses if and only if these things are true. Both of those things are true. So all we have to do is show that those things are true or not true and we'll have our answer. So let's plug them in and let's see. So when I plug in f of, when I start writing f of x out, notice I'm writing it in red, but instead of writing the x, what am I plugging in for x? I'm plugging g of x in, and what's g of x? It's that mess. It's that mess right there, right? It's 1 half the square root of x minus 1. Got it? Yeah. So now let's simplify that out, and let's see if that equals x. When I square it, I will get 1 fourth times x minus 1, right? Times 2 plus 1. Now these multiply together, and I get 1 half times x minus 1 plus 1, and I distribute that in, I get 1 half x minus 1 half plus 1, which is 1 half x minus, sorry, plus 1 half. Is that what I needed? No. I needed x. So because that doesn't equal x, I know that these are not inverses. They're not inverse functions. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing I want to point out is, well, how do you find the inverse then? So if this is my function, x squared plus 1, if that's my function, then what is the inverse? How do I find the inverse? Well, I find the inverse. So this is a different question if they ask you to find the inverse. You find the inverse by changing, let's call this y. You find the inverse by interchanging the x and the y. So I'm going to interchange them. x equals 2y squared plus 1. And then solving for your new y. So x minus 1 equals 2y squared. Divide by 2, right? x minus 1, well, I can write a 1 half in front instead, equals y squared. And now what? Then you would put that on the root. Take the square root, and don't forget the plus or minus, the square root of 1 half. X minus 1 equals Y. Now, the tricky part to this is, is that a function? Remember what this graph looked like in the first place? What kind of graph is that? I mean, it's a parabola. Yeah. And the inverse, in order for the inverse to be a function, the original, the original function needs to pass the horizontal line test. Because here's another point I want to make about inverses. The inver inverses of each other are really reflected over the line y equals x. So let's say I have... I'm going on a little side tangent now. 
let's say I have this, this is a function, or this is um, one of my functions right here. Um, let's just make it a line. Here's, here's one line going through that point right there. Okay, there's one line. I want to find the inverse. If I want to find the inverse of that, I take, a, I take the line that goes through the line y equals x. So here's the line y equals x right here. Is that y equals x? No, that's not y equals x. Here's y equals x. Okay. To find the inverse of that gray line, it's a reflection over the line y equals x. And here's why. Because every point, let's find a point we have, like this point right here, that's negative 1 comma 1. The inverse of this would be the x and the y would be flipped. So the inverse would be 1, negative 1. Let's find another point. This point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This point is negative 6 comma negative 2. So what would the inverse point be? Negative 2, negative 6. Negative six, one, two, three, four, five. It's way down here. It's down at the bottom. I can't even see it. I'm sorry. No, I did not. Negative two. Oh, sorry, I did that wrong. Negative two right here. Negative six, one, two, three, four, five. It'd be way down here. Let's find another point. Um, well, let's keep drawing this, this gray line and see where it goes. See if it goes through another nice point anywhere. Doesn't quite go through another point anywhere. A nice point anywhere. Well, there is one nice point. How about this point right here? What's that point? That's four, four. Four, four. That point is four comma four. What if I flipped four comma four? I still get four comma four. So the inverse function is actually, I'll do this in red. The inverse function is gonna be this line right here and notice that that line is a reflection over, uh, I didn't draw that very good. Notice that line is a reflection over the, over the line y equals x, which is that yellow line in the middle there. So this line is y equals x, that yellow line, and that's the line about which if you reflect a, a um, graph, you will get its inverse, but it's not necessarily going to be a function, okay? Because, for example, if, if you have a parabola, let's, let me do another one. If you have a parabola, let's say right here, let's say you've got a parabola like this. If you flip that, that point is going to be right here. And is that a function anymore? No, it's... No, it's not because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So one of the things that you know about inverse functions is when you're talking about functions, you have to be careful what you're trying to find inverses of. Because technically, if it's, a, if it's not a one-to-one -one graph, if it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, when you flip it, it won't pass the vertical line test and it won't be a function. So this was a bad choice for me to use. Let me change this up slightly. Let me just do that, okay? So I'm trying to find that now. You follow what I did? Yeah. I changed it into a linear. Lines, lines, except horizontal lines, have inverse functions. Okay? So now when I, when I, cha when I exchange the x's and the y's and then I solve for y, there's my inverse function. So g of x, the inverse, let's call it g of x, is 1 half x minus 1 half. Now, if I wanted to check if those were inverses, I could do that same thing I did before. Find g of f of x and f of g of x. Right? Find those things. And when I plug them in, what you'll find is that everything kind of cancels each, each other out and you get the right answer. So let's do, the, let's do g of f of x. So I'm going to start writing g of, 
I'm going to start writing that function out, but instead of writing x, I'm going to put a parenthesis there. And what am I going to plug in for that? 2x plus 1. I'm going to plug in 2x plus 1. And now when I distribute this, what do I get? x plus 1 half minus 1 half. And what happens to that? Those two cancel out. It's just x. Similarly, when I start write, rewriting 2 x plus 1, but I don't write x, instead I plug in g of x, 1 half x minus 1 half. When I distribute that stuff in, I'm going to get x minus 1 plus 1, and what's x minus 1 plus 1 equal? It equals x. That shows that they're inverse functions of each other. That's what an in, that's how you, that's how you can prove that they're inverses, and that's how you can find inverses, and graphically, that's what inverses mean. It means they're reflections over the line y equals x. Another way to think of it is if one function has x comma y, its inverse function is going to have y comma x. So a, another way you can think of it inverses is the x's and y's have been switched. Okay? So that's all there that's all you might want to know about inverses without many many actual problems.